Yeah, g'day Heathers and gentlemen. That's Papa's lathe. Since I'm here visiting my parents, I thought I'd show you my dad's lathe. This 9 inch South Bend long bed lathe is not the first lathe my dad had. When I was a kid growing up in Hawke's Bay, he had a Boxford, but I guess he sold that when they moved here. Sometime later, he bought this South Bend from a gentleman from England who had worked, I believe, in the arsenal there. He was like a tool maker. It's generally in pretty good condition, but it's getting a wee bit of surface rust on it. I thought I'd just quickly go over and... Well, I thought I would oil it, but it looks like there's no oil in here. I'll have to go searching for oil. Found a bit of CRC, that should get me started. Yeah, I guess Dad must have got this lathe at least 20 years ago. And I remember making parts for my camera hip with it. I made like a 4x5 large format camera. And yeah, it's a nice lathe. Very basic, but certainly does the job nicely. Yeah, my dad's a boiler maker by trade. We've always had plenty of tools and especially welders and stuff around the house. Kind of grew up with this sort of thing. This lathe's picked up just a wee bit of surface rust, but not much, so I figured if I give it a lube and take off the surface rust now, it won't get any worse. I was always taught, if something's not clean, you can't inspect it, so let's give it a bit of a clean up first. I'll have to find a better lubricant than that. Yeah, this lathe was really the pride of the old guy who had this before Dad. He really looked after it, and Dad hasn't used it that much, so it's not much wear on it. It's taken a few little nicks and dings, but for the most part it's really in quite nice condition. These old South Bends have almost comically small scales on the compound. Now I've never really been a fan of these lantern tool posts, but I guess they were kind of typical for the era. If I could find the correct oil, I'd give the whole thing a proper oiling. Need to get a bit of oil on this bed. Unfortunately, the only oil I could find is two stroke oil, but better than nothing. Just put a wee bit in there. Oh, good, a data plate I can clean. It's really got a nice usable length between centers, this one. Mm -hmm. 
since this lathe has no power cross feed and also no Norton gearbox to choose your threading pitch I'm saying it's a Model 9C Given it's got a data plate with its logo on it rather than having the letters cast into the bed I'm guessing it's probably 1950s because it's serial number 70 241. I'm assuming there's somebody who can date this more accurately, but I'm going to estimate that it's probably from the late 40s, early 1950s, something like that. It's got the old style on off switch at the front. It's reverse. There's Ford. The drive comes from a motor down here. So it's a half horsepower motor single phase made by Hoover the drive comes from a motor down here up through a big reduction then you've got a three-speed pulley unfortunately this is totally misaligned looks like it's just been badly bolted down to the bench and just needs to be moved over and bolted down properly obviously not good for the belt that misalignment and in reverse you can see it's been rubbing on the cast iron over here Aha, there's one of the nuts to hold it down. So I'm guessing that just the, it was bolted from below and the bolts come unscrewed and it's probably lying on the floor somewhere. I went looking for the second bolt hole in the table to bolt this whole lay shaft down and I can't find a hole. So I'm wondering whether it's always been sitting here loose. It's kind of sad. This being the nine inch Model C, all your sliding feeds and also thread cutting is done with change wheels. Luckily, it came with a full set of uh, change wheels, so that's good. And a bunch of other accessories. Here's the threading dial. There's the inside and outside jaws. What's this? Here's the bed stop for precision cutting to a shoulder. The traveling steady. Very nice little angle plate then. Nice forge jaw chuck. Bit of surface rust on it. What are the markings there? Okay, this side's stamped made in England. So what is this? Pratt maybe? Okay, so it's marked the Bernard. I guess this was before Pratt and Bernard uh, merged. A catch plate. Or a dog plate. A huge three jaw chuck. This collet draw tube's picked up a lot of surface rust. I'll quickly just give that a de rusting and oil it up. I don't really have time to do a complete rust removal at this stage, but at least get a bit of oil on it. So hopefully it'll stop rusting any worse. There's the fix steady. There's the collet closing mechanism, I'm gonna say. Very cute little three jaw chuck. Made in England. It's a little Pratt chuck. All right, let's see what's in these drawers, shall we? All right, there's the original South Bend faceplate. Rest of it's just junk. Not quite sure what that is. It just goes on the spindle and has a fine thread around the outside. Oh, a very nice set of punches with serif, I think. Allen key collection and just a bunch of special tools by looks, D-bits, formed D-bits I guess. This looks like miscellaneous drills, drills and taps. Yep. And in the top here, also just a bunch of specials. There's the adapter to hold a tool rest for hand turning. Now what's in here? See, I thought this lathe came with a full set of 3C collets, but 
I can't see them yet. This is just miscellaneous measuring equipment, micrometers and stuff. It's probably mostly Imperial. My dad mostly came for that age when everything was Imperial. And the bottom's empty. Nice South Bend sea spanner. This, this cabinet's now so distorted that it doesn't close. I'm not quite sure what the three jaw is. Let's have a look. I can't see any brand on that. Oh, wait a minute, it's on the outside. The Cushman. Hartford, Connecticut, USA. On top of the three gears through the pulley, you also have a back gear here. I think you just pull this out. And then this lever here moves like an accenter. And, yep, then you can engage the back gear. So if we turn that on. We should now have the much slower speeds. Oh, nice. There we go. And now back in normal gear. Normal one to one. So what does it cut like? With the drive not secured properly, I'll just take a light cut. I'm not sure if it's on center height, I think it's a bit too high, but... Automatic feed. No, well, can't really argue with that. It's only aluminium. Well, so there you have it. You can see why South Bends are still a very sought after lathe, even today. It's just a nice size. Uh, fits in the garage nicely. It's got a good size swing for all your home shop stuff. Bed's nice and rigid. It's got a good distance between centers. With the three speeds plus the back gear, you've got a wide range of cutting speeds. Can cut threads. May take a little bit of time to set up the change wheels, but it can get everything done, you know. It's a lovely lathe, and since there's only one tradesman in the next generation of my extended family, I'm pretty sure Henry's going to love it when he eventually inherits it, which hopefully is a long time in the future. Thanks a lot for watching.